what's up guys welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are doing good so in today's video i'm going to be playing with some old favorites um i wanted to try the flash tip trend that i've been seeing on instagram and i actually have the glitter gels to do them it's like a glitter gel polish set from burano um, when I initially reviewed them, I didn't know that's how you're supposed to use them. But I guess you're really supposed to put like a black or white base down and then the glitter over it. And you get like this really nice reflective, um, like glittery like tip. It's like super glittery, like disco glitter. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to try that out today. But right now I'm doing the base on all the nails. We're going to be doing that later on because I'm going to be doing like the nail art and stuff on top of the nails. So I'm building up the nails with this color from McCart. This color is from their Nude Poly Gel Kit. It's the color 331. It's a very light, light nude pink. At first, I never really liked this color, but now that I've like tried it in this video and I have it on, I actually really do like it. I think it's really pretty for like French nails and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm building up the nails with this color and at the beginning of the video, I showed you the base gel that I have on my nails, which is from Madame Glam in the shade India. I did prep my nails off camera and um, I did apply that base gel onto my nails afterwards. I've been using this base gel to strengthen my nails and I've been leaving it there so I have something to follow down to when I change my nails. But yeah, anyways, I'm building up the nails with this color. This color is a little bit sticky. This is from one of um, McCart's older kits. So the poly gel is a little bit sticky. So I'm just using some base gel as a slip solution. With sticky poly gel or like really hard or firm poly gel, base gel really helps um, it apply better onto the nail because it softens it and it just makes it easier and your brush doesn't stick to it as much. Um, if the base gel gets like too gunked up in my brush, I do like dip my brush a little bit into some isopropyl alcohol. I was having a little bit of a trouble like applying this color so I did have to go in with like a second layer just to give the nails like an even coat and to give them a little bit more um, thickness because they were a little bit thin. I wear my nails long so one layer wasn't really enough. So as you can see, I'm kind of like brushing the poly gel up and stuff to try to even out the color because I found that like when I was brushing it, like sometimes it would leave like little patches in certain areas. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of trying to even that out. When I go in with the second layer, um, it really like evened everything out. Um, and I'm like flash curing as I go so I don't mess my nails up. I have a tendency to like bump my hand or something like that. So yeah, we're not dealing with that today. Um, so yeah, basically when I apply the poly gel on the nail, I just squeeze it right onto the nail. And I usually leave like that rounded end up by the cuticle area, as you can see. And when I start patting the poly gel in place, I always get it like flush by the cuticle first. And then I start patting like side to side all the way down the nail. But that rounded end, I focus it in that area up by the nail bed. Um, to build my apex um, so I don't really brush it down only a little bit to blend it into the tip if that makes any sense and I also make sure to like smooth the nail out and everything as much as I can before I cure it in my lamp like I said I was having a little bit of trouble with this poly gel because it was a little bit sticky but I did the best that I could sometimes certain poly gels are just like that um, I feel like it's also the color too and if I have any excess I just remove it with the other end of my poly gel brush. I'm just using a poly gel brush from the McCart Pink Poly Gel Kit, if you are wondering. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there was like a little patch there. So I was kind of like trying to brush the poly gel up and down to even out, but it just was not working out. So I said, forget it and I'll just cure it and then go in with a second layer. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cure that and then apply the poly gel to the pinky and then I'll be going in with the second layer.
And now I'm going in with the second layer, but this time I'm not like applying it to the entire nail. I'm just applying a bead up by the cuticle area. And I'm basically kind of building the apex a little bit more with that. And then just brushing the rest of the poly gel over the tip, which will also help even out the color and give the tip a little bit more thickness as well. But I didn't want to go in with like poly gel over the whole entire nail because then they'll end up like super, super thick and yeah, that would look crazy and I would have like a bunch of filing to do. It's pretty much like I said to add a little bit more thickness to the apex and then even out the color since there was like a little bit of patches in certain areas. Um, so yeah, I basically just pat it in place how I did the other one. I always start by the cuticle and I'm focusing mostly um, a lot of the poly gel up by the cuticle nail bed area to build the apex. And like I said, brushing the rest over the tip and if I have any excess just remove it and as you can see just by doing that the color evened out like perfectly on this nail um, I still had a little bit of an issue on the ring finger so after curing the second layer I did have to go in right at the tip and just add a little bit more because as you can see in that like bottom right hand corner on the ring finger I don't know what was going on the poly gel just did not want to like stay in that area and it was really like getting on my nerves i kept like brushing it up and down and it just wouldn't stay so i decided to cure the nail after applying the second layer and then go in with some just right at the tip and finally that worked
so like I said, I'm applying a little bead of poly gel right there at the tip of the nail since for some reason um, it didn't want to stay in that area. And finally, after applying it right there and brushing it a little bit, it finally like blended in um, with the rest of the poly gel. But I don't know what was going on with that. I guess maybe I might have added a little bit too much base gel or something and the poly gel just kept sliding around when I was trying to apply it there that's all I could like really think of um so if you are using base gel as a slip just remember to like add only a little bit you really don't need a lot <laughs> I think I kind of like overdid it with the base gel but anyway let's move on to the filing I'm using my two-in-one um nice bowl nail drill and little lamp it's like a two-in-one portable um e-file and a mini lamp which works really good that was the mini lamp I was using in the video um, so yeah, right now I'm going to debulk. I'm using my drill on 15,000 RPMs. I've been leaving that in the videos lately so you guys can um, get an idea of what um, speed I'm going when I'm filing. Um, so to debulk, I usually do like 15,000 RPMs. Um, so yeah, right now I'm pretty much smoothing over the nails. I'm going around the cuticle area. I'm smoothing side to side all over the nail, filing underneath the nail, along the side walls. Um, the way this poly gel is, for some reason the nails weren't coming out very smooth. So I'm actually going to go in with another bit after this to like really smooth them out um, just a little bit more and get like a nice even texture all over. Um, I don't know if I should have capped this color or not, or maybe it's just because, I don't know, certain colors are weird like that. Um, but yeah, going in with like a sanding band really helped. I went in with like one of those zebra sanding bands, which really helped to buff the nails. Um, and it gave them a nice smooth like finish all over the nails after doing that. Um, so yeah, you always want to make sure you have your little hill that's your apex and your sidewall should be the thinnest part of your nail and then your nail gets gradually thinner towards the free edge but make sure you have a little bit of thickness there so that your nails don't like snap and break and I try to get like the cuticle area down as much as I can um, before I go in with my cuticle bit to um, seal.
Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my cuticle bit and I'm using it on about 10,000 RPMs. You always wanna use a lower speed when doing cuticle work. I'm using this one um, cuticle bit that came with one of my other nail drills. It's like a round one. I really like this one too because um, like it helps exfoliate the dead skin around the cuticle area while still like sealing around the cuticle area. Um, so I really like that. So if you have like any like cuticle like skin that you're afraid to like um, nip off with like some nail nippers you can just go around the cuticle area with this and we'll take that like dead skin off like nothing I actually used it before the video to do my nail prep and it literally took all the dead skin off and it's like so gentle you just have to like be really careful like when you're putting it against the skin um, but yeah, it takes it off really nicely. This is a really nice one. I'll try to find one like it and link it in my Amazon store under nail prep and tools. I usually have a lot of my drill bit recommendations um, in there. Also, like a lot of other things that I use, like my nail tips and stuff for nail prep are going to be linked in my Amazon store. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out if you're interested. So now I'm going in with a 100, 180 grit nail file and I'm going to shape up the nails. I like to do my shaping last if you watch my channel a lot. You know that I feel like you just get a nice sharper shape that way because you're doing it as the last step and you're not going in with like the drill or anything which will dull your shape. Um, so yeah, for this set I'm doing a long like kind of coffin shape. Um, I wouldn't really consider these square because I tapered in the tip a lot more than I usually do. Um, I didn't keep it as wide so kind of like a long coffin or maybe like a very thin tapered square whatever you would like to call it. Um, so right now I'm taking the bulk off of the sides of the nail so I hold my file straight and I file a few times on each side like that and to taper in the tip I hold my file at an angle and file in towards the tip and to file the free edge I just hold my file at an angle in a file straight across or up and down like whichever one is easier and after I do that I always make sure to go in with my buffer and buff out all the scratches on the nails if you skip that step you will definitely regret it because you'll be able to see all those scratches on your nail through your top coat and everything and it's not a good look
Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and start painting the side fringe onto the nails. I'm using Perfect Black from Madame Glam and I'm also using this um, detail brush. I believe it's like the size 3. I have these links in my Amazon store under nail prep and tools. It comes in a set of 5 and it has different size brushes and on the other end there's like different size dotting tools on them. I love this brush so much. I literally glued it back together because it broke. That's how long I've had it. I don't know. I feel like it's just my lucky brush. I have like a million brushes, but for some reason, this is the only one that I reach for. Isn't that crazy? And like, I don't know, something about it. I feel like it just helps me do nail art better. It's like my lucky brush or something. And it actually broke, so I had to glue it back together. Maybe I should get a new one, but since it's my lucky brush, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So I'm drawing a line like going diagonally across the nail at the tip and I'm basically just filling it in it's super easy you also want to make sure you um, paint like um, the very tip of the nail so that everything looks nice and blended um, and you can just like tighten up your lines as you go along make sure you get the side of the nail as well so everything looks nice and blended like I said and I'm curing that and I'm gonna be using this um, glitter gel from Burano this came with their um, diamond glitter gel polish set. It's a six piece set. Um, I'll have the review linked in the cards if you guys want to check it out. Um, but this one is colored number one, I believe. Um, the bottom of the bottle says one, so that's what I'm going with. It's like a light pinkish color, but when you put it on over the black, it just looks silver, honestly. Um, but as you can see, like applying that over the black, it's so like sparkly and reflective. It's like super hollow, like times a thousand. They're so pretty. I love the way they look. Um, so yeah, you just wanna paint like right over that and go ahead and cure. Now I'm going to go ahead and start painting the little daisy flowers. I actually did a tutorial um, doing this type of daisy flower recently, so I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm using Madame Glam Perfect White um, to draw them. So this is a really easy way to draw flowers. So basically you want to make your dots um, with a dotting tool into the shape of a flower, and then you basically drag the end of the little um, dot that you made into the center um, like as of where like the center of the flower would be and it creates like a flower so easily so if you're having trouble like drawing little flowers like this um, definitely try this um, because it's super easy um, and I'm like purposely leaving the middle like blank because I'm going to be using like a little um, rhinestone as like the middle of the flower. So I'm just dragging all of the petals like to the middle um, and then I'm just going to put like a rhinestone there.
to finish up, I'm just going to go ahead and top coat all the nails with some McCart top gel. And then I'm placing my bling right into the gel since I'm not really keeping these on long. Um, I did this set actually to match my toes um, because I have like a pink nail bed on my toes and the black side French um, reflective tips on my toes with bling. So I kind of like did this set to match with it. I didn't really plan for my toes to turn out that way, um, but they just did. So I was like, well, I might as well do a set to match my toes. So that's kind of like the inspiration behind this um, set. Plus I wanted to add flowers to it to make it like a little bit springy, but it's not like super bright and springy. So if you're not somebody who's like really into color like that, um, here's another way you can like rock spring without being like super bright and in your face. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like this set. After I apply the blink, I'm just going to cure for 60 seconds. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. If you're new to this channel, I would love it if you subscribe because I post nail tutorials and reviews every week. So you definitely don't want to miss out. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload. And if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do that too so we could stay connected on there as well. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Love you guys.